Here's the story of how Spark Cycle Works in Brantford, Connecticut, and I converted that 1961 Vespa into a fully electric scooter that can cruise along at more than 40 miles an hour. It's a long story with a lot of ups and downs, and I'm going to tell you the whole thing. But before we get into any of that, I know you want to check this thing out, right? Here's where the story begins. My friend Dave from Elm City Vintage collects and restores these old scooters, and it took me years of begging and pleading with him to get him to finally sell me one, and this is the one he's willing to let go of. It is a 1961 Sears Allstate scooter. It is made by Vespa in Italy and then imported into America for the market here. Um, this is originally a 125cc two-stroke engine, and it has been sitting for a very long time, as you can see. This is what it looked like when I got it from him. It was uh, part of his collection that he was going to a restore eventually, but was finally willing to let go of and uh, let me do something instead. And uh, so the first thing I had to do was get a couple of years of grime off of it and then take it apart and uh, see what we were working with. What made the scooter the perfect uh, one for me to try uh, this electric conversion with is that half the engine's missing and what was there was all seized up. So it's uh, not like I took a working scooter and dismantled it. I took one that was really just sitting there and rotting. This is my son Vance, he was 11 at the time. We started this last year and uh, he helped me do a lot of the taking it apart. Uh, it was kind of a little father-son project here and you can see what happened here on the bottom of the scooter that it sat for so long it, uh, it got soft and rotted out. But um, for the most part, the body's in pretty good shape. Now I'm of the school of thought that says that you know things only have original paint once and uh, I'm a fan of patina. So I really wanted to not mess with the original paint and just leave it as original as possible, but make it solid and secure. Good. We want to get all this stuff there while we can, all that grease. Once we get it all cleaned up, we were able to see how bad the rust was. And I basically just had this one section in the middle that needed to be uh, re-welded. And so before I did that, I wanted to clean it all up in there the best I can and, and protect it from rotting out in the future. So I used this Eastwood product, this rust encapsulator, and I sprayed it in all the nooks and crannies everywhere I could in there to coat that metal with something protective. Um, before welding it back closed again. Now I could have taken the whole floorboard off and welded a new floorboard on but it looked to me like it would be a little bit easier to just patch this which may or may not have been the right way to do it because what happened is the floorboard that I bought from Scooter Mercado, they sell a lot of these old scooter parts, um, it didn't line up 100% perfectly with this so I couldn't quite exactly seam it together like seamlessly but I, it's fine you know and no one's going to see it and it was a good practice for me i don't have a lot of experience with uh, welding sheet metal but if i were to do it again i think i might try to take that whole bottom off i was just afraid that if i did that i was going to run into some structural problems putting it back together but so you can see i made a template and then cut from the new one just the part that i needed to replace and uh and then just started tacking it in you know it took a little practice and some patience and i blew it out here and there and then had to fix it again because uh, welding sheet metal is a little tricky but it was a great way to learn and then i figured since i'm learning how to weld sheet metal there's someone else that might uh benefit from this learning experience too come in here get your head in really close okay while i'm doing it i want to just sort of push into it just a little bit not pushing but just like a little Okay, you try. Let me see. That's not bad, but see that little, see if you can get that little spot right there, and then the very top right there, a little bit. And then we will uh, grind it down and see what it looks like. Sometimes if you, you can like steady it with your hand like this, and then see how I have like a little more control. Vance had only ever held a welder once or twice before, and he did pretty good. That's going 
be good. That was the right amount oh, of time. Oh, wow. That's exactly what I want to see, Vance. That's, look. It's like a perfect dot. That's exactly what you want to do. Each one of these little holes. We had some fun learning a little bit about welding and making mistakes and, you know, fixing one hole and then blowing out another as kind of happens with sheet metal. And so it's not perfect, but it's uh, all sealed up pretty good. I'm going to use this, this rust patina. Watch this. This is kind of cool. To make it look old. Just make it match everything else. Steam well, it's steaming from that it's, hitting the hot. Yeah, because it's still hot. So we'll let that sit for That's a minute. That's pretty cool. And then we'll wash that off. And then we're going to use that total boat fix out. And we'll just go around and cover a thin coat. It'll fill in all the gaps and cracks and stuff and keep it all watertight. Fixo is a two-part epoxy product made by a total boat that's designed for basically plugging up holes on boats and whatnot. And I used it on the Jambulance, my box truck. There were some leaks on and it worked great there. So I figured I could just kind of make sure the whole underside was watertight. Okay, a lot of time has passed since I first took on the scooter project. It's been almost a year since I got the thing. And uh, I really was hoping it wouldn't come to this and I didn't want to have to say anything negative in my video, but I feel like I need to to protect you. So originally when I got the scooter, my plan was to get some kind of electric motor and make some sort of chain drive thing. Uh, and I started researching that. I found that there were actually some companies that already make kits for converting these old scooters. And there's one in particular out of the Netherlands called Smeets Classics that looked like it was a perfect fit for me. So I wrote to the guy uh, we wrote back and forth a couple times seemed like a nice guy and he's willing to give me a 10% off deal to purchase the kit and use it in my video and you know the plugs and all that stuff uh, and then the kit never came week after week excuse after excuse then long bouts of silence and here we are almost a year later I've yet to get my kit and um, he doesn't write back to me anymore so I'm not saying this for you to feel bad for me I'm gonna be okay don't worry about me if anything I'm gonna be better and I'll tell you why in a minute but I'm just saying this to warn any of you if you want to do something like this and you're looking into these conversion kits there's one guy I can tell you not to buy from and it is Smeets Classics in the Netherlands and so just spread the word protect your friends that this guy is not running a good business and he's he's a little shady so the good news is is that forced me to start looking into doing it on my own again which is what I really should have been doing in the first place which then led me to discover Spark Cycle Works which is right down the street from me in Connecticut uh, and they have an e-bike line I started talking with Matt and I know Taryn who works there and um, they were like all in to help me do this I just wanted to ask them a couple questions about you know what's the best battery the best motor all that type of stuff I just wanted a little bit of help for them just point me in the right direction and instead Matt just was like like gung-ho to help me on this and uh, we're going to go start seeing some of the fruits of that labor right now. I'm on my way to Spark Cycle Works. Come along. Oh yeah, I forgot you can't walk. Besides the kit being listed by the con man, there was really only one other kit that was available that seemed like a viable option for converting an old Vespa to electric, and it was also in Europe, and it was very, very expensive. And um, so when I got to talking with Matt about this, he saw the potential for a market for a kit, and so that's one of the many reasons he was willing to help me on this. Um, Plus, he's just an awesome guy. Check out some of his work here. That just has a video, just like... Yeah, just, just, just the whole time, time. <laughs> just do that. Just keep getting closer. <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Taryn. We're from Spark. Just go back in time a little bit. We did discuss this project in person before the day that we're filming now, and here's what I need to show you. This is the basic assembly that holds the whole motor in the rear wheel. Bolts to the body there, and then here, it hangs on the rear suspension. There's our whole engine and transmission. Everything powers that wheel. As we want to have an electric hub motor, it's going to sit there. And so we're going to have to build a swing arm that bolts into that spot there and holds this. And then we can have plenty of space up in here for our battery. So Matt and I discussed the basic setup of how the Vespa is set up and then how we would convert it. I made these mock-ups out of cardboard and then I put it in Matt's capable hands and he won up to this whole thing. Check it out. <laughs> so can you, um, Matt, can you explain what you've done so far? We've been trying to figure out a way to basically replace this entire motor assembly. So Tim, what is this like? A, is this a five horsepower? To match it, we're doing about 3000 watts. Um, and we're going to do a 72 volt motor. So this is just a generic 60 to 72 volt controller, 3000 watt, 50 amp. It's nothing fancy. Right. That's okay. And it's a hub motor, of course, but let's, the, the real exciting part is this thing that you designed. <laughs> yes. Uh, so the way the original motor works is it hangs just from a bolt here and then connects to a shock there. Yep. And that's the whole thing. So we had to create a bracket yeah. to fit in that space and you made this much better than the cardboard design I came up with. <laughs> well, so the problem was um, 
the original like Vespa design is a single-sided swing arm, right? So when you look at the wheel, it's only mounted on from one side. And these hub motors, there's really no way to do that because they're actually putting their torque on the actual dropout itself on this flat point. Right. So we needed to figure out a way to keep these dimensions, but also allow the hub motor to, weigh the, to work the way it works. I tried to make it as universal as possible, but this should just go through here. And then I have an additional bushing on each side that will space it out. Just keep it simple. Like this doesn't need to be totally insane. Yeah. But yeah, this is all Sen Cut Sen. Shout out to Sen Cut Sen. This was the part we were most concerned about, but Matt's design worked perfectly. We just had to cut a couple bushings to fit just right, and it all went in seamlessly. All our problems happened a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, so that patch is the Fifth Army, yeah. which uh, was active from January 4th, 1943 to the 2nd of October, 1945. 43 4th is a World War II yeah. unit. This is Taryn's jacket. Yes, it is. Because that's just family jacket. kind of how you roll. And then I noticed. You just noticed that on the back of this. On the back of Tim's bike. Here. So this, well, this is a 61 Vespa, so it couldn't have. No. It was like having like veteran on your plate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So they were, uh, principal okay. formation of the U.S. Army in the Mediterranean theater of World War II. Ah. So they were the main guys over in Italy. Wow. Take that, Mussolini. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, that's hot. Uh, I measured that for you. I, that was my, those are my numbers. Okay. I measured all that, so I, I didn't just draw it. You <laughs> <laughs> gave me a cardboard cutter. Yeah. I can see. This is perfect, guys. Yeah, let's put it on the wheel. No, that looks, uh, yeah. I mean, the tire's a little, a little small, but, once it, but when you look on this side, you can barely tell because once the fender's on, Yeah. it looks so, pretty, it's kind of a weird optical illusion because width-wise, it's obviously about three quarters of an inch smaller. Right. Diameter, it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Yeah, exactly just, the same. Yeah. But it's a width. But I think it's good. Uh, it's close. It's but... very close. <laughs> yeah. It can it can be moved over if we need to. That is. Well, yeah. We just switch the size of the bearings. Yep. It'd be you know. very easy. So far, so good. Now here's where the problem started. Well, I'm gonna just hit a little power. It's off the ground, right? Yeah. It's going reverse. These things will always come with like a way to reverse it. All right, I'm just gonna hit it real quick, just so we can get an idea of what it's gonna be like. A little off balance. It's okay. It's, uh, I'm trying to make sure that it's uh, it, not gonna rip out of the mouse. Right. So, let's jump. What else can we connect and then disconnect and feel like we're trying something? Sometimes you have to try a few wiring combinations on the motor to get it just right. And sometimes the controller itself has a learning module, which we were able to use a little bit later, but we'll get to that. All we were hoping to accomplish that day was to make sure that the motor mount was going to fit and work, and it did. And so with that in and working, I took the scooter back to my workshop where I started to run the wires and find a place to mount the control unit and all that stuff. Tidy it all up so uh, we could then bring it back to Matt's shop and hook up the battery and do the final work. One of the things I had to do was steady the handles because the way the original Vespa worked, you had a twist throttle as well as a clutch and uh, all sorts of moving parts on the handlebars and so I simply tapped them and ran a bolt through them the one I was able to do on the inside and another one from the outside uh, to keep the handles still um, and I also wanted to replace the 60 year old tire that was on the front wheel since that one was still original so I was able to buy one of those from scootermercado.com and uh, these two-piece wheels make changing out tires real easy well I had it apart I cleaned it up and uh, just spray painted it flat black to just have it sort of match the uh, new electric hub that we have now I do have to put an ad read into this video for uh, my sponsor, the 49 Cycle Club, but you know I'm very selective about who my sponsors are and it just so happens that the 49 Cycle Club is a club that I started.
Does she have a license plate on that thing? I don't know. It said 49cc. You sure that's a moped? Thing's going pretty fast. It has a 49cc engine. I can see it from here. You know the law. Vehicles with an engine smaller than 50cc do not require registration. I don't even think that thing has an engine. Forget about it. Life sure is better since I've joined the 49 Cycle Club. Get your official wallet size membership card and sticker today. The 49 Cycle Club, either you get it or you don't. The 49 Cycle Club, where our motto is, look out, squirrel. The 49 Cycle Club, 60% of the time, it works all the time. The 49 Cycle Club, where our motto is, sure, it's street legal. Come on, are any of these any good? The 49 Cycle Club, where our motto is, it's just a club name, officer. The 49 Cycle Club is for riders of e-bikes, e-scooters, and e-mopeds. However, all are welcome. The club is open to anyone in the continental United States and Alaska, and Hawaii, and U.S. territories. International members are also welcome. Membership benefits include a very official looking sticker and this card. Membership does not provide any services, legal or otherwise, discounts, perks, group meetings, secret handshakes, insurance, common sense, or the right of way. There is a secret handshake. Being a member of the 49 CC does not mean your vehicle is street legal or that you are legally allowed to ride it. It grants you no immunity from the law anywhere in the world and offers no legal recourse or assistance if you do break the law. If you misinterpret the membership to mean anything other than club membership, you are wrong, officer. Ops, up. <laughs> the 49 Cycle Club, obfuscation for all. I, I can't even say that. You can see without that motor there, we have tons of room for the control box and the wires, plenty of places to run them, so that was real easy. I don't have the right battery set up yet. I don't have the right trigger or anything set up yet, but I just bolted the seat on and strapped everything down just so I can actually take it for its first maiden voyage because I haven't ridden it yet. It was fun to actually ride it and uh, the part of the kit that Matt is designing includes a rear disc brake which worked great and the uh, original front brake I had working great. Uh, and I, I had a blast running up and down the street for a few minutes but it wasn't really very fast and um, I didn't know why. I thought maybe it was just the battery but I wasn't going to really worry about it. And then it started kind of stalling out altogether. So I just figured maybe the battery was dead and I got to starting to snake all the wires through the body into that cavity so I can do all my further electrical stuff later. I cut the top off the gas tank, careful to not create sparks with the angle grinder because there was a little bit of oil and gas still in there, and clean that up to, you know, put it back on and make a lid to cover the battery. I made some mock-ups of some different battery sizes out of cardboard. We found the best one that fit, Matt ordered it, and then I went back to spark. There you go. I'm going to first do it in, I guess, the slower mode. That's very slow. All right, hold on. Here's where we found that it wasn't the battery I had that wasn't working right, it was the controller. It just wasn't given enough juice to really go fast. You can see there's Matt going about as fast as he could make it go. <laughs> Matt had a few theories as to what was going on, and we ended up trying a couple different controllers out to get the mix right. I have a feeling the whole sensors are fighting. Too much for the motor? Yeah, it was bogged. Well, that's sure. exactly what we're talking about with the carburetor. Like, it was bogging down. Yes. You had too much yeah. gas. But usually... Matt tried out a different controller, and you can see he's got a little more speed now, and it's doing better, but it's still not up to snuff of what it should be able to do. Tell me what's going on. So, it's running, and it's just like your description. It's like being on a sofa. I think the motor is just, like, wired up in reverse. And so we used a controller that had an intelligent programming feature, so you can basically plug anything into it and it figures it out. The only problem is this controller is rated to like 30 amps. So we really need to get more like 45 amps out of it. And there's just, it's just not handling it. Like yeah. it just gets up to speed and cuts out. Yeah. You gotta pull to the side, wait for it to cool off. You know, you can see, like look how small the controller is. Right, compared to that, I picked them up. Compared to like, yeah. no. This is 50 amp, right? It's a little, little beefy. 72 volt, 50 amp. Yeah. And that's intelligent? Yeah, it has an intelligent controller on it. We're going to get there. We're going on day three of on video, at least. <laughs> awesome, man. All right, All right. Let's, let's call it a day. I think that sounds good. 
We regrouped the next hot, miserable day and put the new controller in, ran a bunch of wires again, did a bunch of tests again, ran into little problems, started discussing how we're going to do some future stuff to, you know, give it more than just the throttle and brakes, but, you know, a battery gauge and speedometers and all lights and all that stuff. Um, and then Matt took it for a spin. I put my phone in the saddlebag with the speedometer on to see what his top speed would be, and it got up to over 45 miles an hour on this run. Finally, we felt like we got somewhere and we stopped to make some silly pictures. Uh, I hopped on the Vespa, Matt hopped on one of his Spark Cycle Works Bandits, and Taryn hopped on another one. We rode up to get some iced coffee, found out they were closed, rode back. Then I ran over a nail and popped a tire. And then we had more problems, and then we had more problems. We had more issues to deal with and everything. Fortunately, Matt's a really positive guy, and instead of us getting down and just thinking the bike was cursed or the gasoline moguls were out to get us, but instead of getting discouraged, Matt did a little more research. We found a better motor with a better tire that was a better match to the front tire on the original Vespa. Took a few more weeks for that to come in, and we had some more problems, but here we are. We persevered, and we figured it out. But hey, that's prototyping, right? I mean, you get beat up a little bit, and then to the end, you get a viable product. Let me give you a quick tour under the hood of what we've completed so far and what we still have to do. So you can see here I have this beautiful 72 volt battery that fits into here and it powers this 3000 watt hub motor. And there's this beautiful controller that's actually Bluetooth enabled. So if you check this out, there's this app on my phone that when I turn the scooter on, you'll see it connects. And now I can use this app to check all the stats on my battery and I can tweak it and really get maximum efficiency for what I need to do from the vehicle. Uh, the other thing I have is for now just this frog pod, which is my friend Tom's product that I can put my phone right here with the speedometer or that app and, and run whatever I need to run until I get to all that in the future. So in the future, what I still need to do is hook up all my tail lights and brake lights and I have this 12 volt step down that's connected to the battery uh, that will do all that. Simple throttle, squeeze brake for the front, foot brake for the back, and that's it. You can see all the batteries and wires tuck in here, no problem. And then the other thing I want to do is make the charging port come out where the gas cap would be. So I just have to make a little, little piece to hold that right there and just lift the gas cap and charge. Matt has a ton of ideas for making this to be a, a pretty simple DIY kit that you can just install into your own vintage Vespa, and he's working on making that a product over at SparkCycleWorks.com. If that's the sort of thing that you're interested in, let me know in the comments below, and that'll sort of fuel Matt and his creative process. We figured out all the hard stuff, and now it's just a matter of making something that's just like pretty easy for anybody to put in. If you want to get into e-scooting, but you don't want to do all this work and restore an old Vespa, you can also just pick up the Spark Bandit, which is what Taryn is riding behind me right now. The Bandit is not an e-bike. This is an actual street legal moped complete with a VIN number and you can fully register it in all 50 United States if you choose to do so. It features a 1500 watt motor that, with its high speed pedal assist, you can easily take this bike over 35 miles an hour and cruise safely in traffic. It starts at a little over $3,000 and you can learn more at SparkCycleWorks.com. Spark is also working on this new vehicle here called the Javelin that is in prototyping stages too. This is the second prototype and it's awesome. Stay tuned for more on that. The Javelin is going to be even bigger, badder, and faster than the Bandit with a lot of really unique cutting edge and fun features. So stay tuned to learn more about that. So let's talk money. All in this conversion costs a little bit less than just buying the brand new moped, but obviously it was a ton more work. For me, the process is more about the journey and the mixing old with new, because I get into that sort of thing. So I, I'm really glad I did it. But honestly, if I'm looking for a ride, I would probably just buy a Bandit. <laughs> I still have a bunch more work to do on this, including getting the lights up and running and sort of buttoning down some details. Um, so if you're interested in this sort of content, let me know in the comments and I will continue to film the process and share it with you. Also make sure to follow Spark Cycle Works on social media and their website and stuff to keep up to date on their kits and their Javelin projects and, and everything they're doing because it's amazing and, and really interesting and exciting. And don't forget to check out the 49 Cycle Club over at 49cycleclub.com. It's open to everyone and either you get it or you don't. Okay, thank you very much for watching and be good. <laughs>